graphics presentation is the Marco Air Cycle System. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Philip Campbell. I have with me Kay McDaniel and Alex Lentz, and we are the Micro Air Cycle System, or Max for short. Uh, just a brief overview of what it is. It's a compression-based cooling system uh, with, that uses electrostatic compression to ideally create the cooling of some enclosure. Uh, what our main goal was was to create a test environment, uh, which has several issues. Uh, some of our first attempts were to do this in room temperature, that was mostly last semester. We realized after doing some thermodynamic analysis that thermally it wasn't favorable for us to test the room temperature. So coming into the summer, we had to devise a new system, uh, what we have termed a state state calorimeter, uh, to do that. And so one of my main things was I worked in the design and worked in testing the box. And so basically the design is it's in a small box that fits our main stack in that is comprised of a filament, a temperature sensor inside the box, and an external microcontroller. Uh, the temperature sensor reading is fed to the microcontroller. It compares that against our set temperature and then adjusts the current running through the filament to compensate and try to pull the box at a state of temperature. And so a lot of the, the implementation of the argument of microcontroller we use was done by Kane. And then Alex works a lot on our external circuit. We had to use a MOS circuit to convert the output of a PWM wave from the Arduino into a current that we could use to heat the filament. So Alex worked on finding the parts for that, putting that circuit together. And then we all came together over the last several weeks to actually test the circuit. And so behind me are a couple of our graphs. We calibrated it using a block device, compared that against the theoretical value of the amount of energy it would take to melt a given size block device. As you can see, the uh, dotted line up there is the theoretical value. And then we have a fit line and our actual data curve up there. And so it overshot a little bit in the estimate, estimate of the energy, but it measured accurately within about 30%, uh, which is well within our goal of 50% accuracy, given that it's very difficult to measure the amounts of energy we're dealing with. And so after that, we actually tested it with a vein inside. And that's the graph right behind me at two different frequencies. The red curve is at 10 hertz, the black curve is at 20 hertz, and we were actually able to measure in effect uh, a cooling. It's about four joules over 10 minutes, which comes out to, for the 10 hertz, comes out to about a third of a millijoule per compression, which for us is actually a very, very small amount of heat to be able to measure. So we, we have some recommendations for the next team. This is an ongoing project uh, in terms of ways to improve it by adding more temperature sensors. Uh, we want to move to an FPGA approach so we can get a faster response time and also expand the customizability of it. Uh, but we don't have time to do that with our server. And I'll take any questions if you have. Yes, it looks to me like just simply looking at the red graph, <coughs> graph up there. The air seems to be almost systematic rather than random. On which graph? On the uh, the rightmost. Yeah. So the rightmost graph. Yeah, actually, it represents a lot of it could be a systematic error. <laughs> there, there could be. Uh, that's also as well as we're running, so we expect a somewhat linear response okay. uh, because they're running at a constant rate. And the the good thing that that we do see is we saw a difference in the way it responded. <coughs> which means there's at least some effect of the things running. Other questions? There yes. Were, there were previous teams that have done uh, not the same project in the same things. Um, did you talk with them or did you talk with other potential customers, first name or others that might have to give you feedback as to whether you find whether you were successful? Yeah, so in the spring, we actually worked with uh, the Spring Magic team then. Uh, we are actually the first team that has been able to quantify an amount, an external amount of heat. Every team before is focused on what's actually happening during compression. And so it was stick a thermal couple in the veins, watch the temperature of the air inside it change. Uh, this was actually heavily influenced by what Dr. Grenade wanted this semester. Uh, one of the things uh, coming into the summer he said was, we need to find a way to measure the amount of heat because without this, we can't move past really proving that this is a viable method. Sure. It was 109 degrees yesterday. Is there any company that wants to pick this up right now? Now that we've talked to, this is very much still in the research stages. Uh, the, the plan from here that they will most likely pursue is we're, we're going to run a few more tests and try to collect some more data for them, and then they can take it 
take that and try to secure funding. There's a long ways to go before this right here can cool any, any room this size where we're cooling the boxes. <coughs> that big. And only four tools, which is a very minuscule. So you guys have senior design three in mind as well. <laughs> uh, our hope is that they, they pick up another senior design team for the fall. Uh, we, we are making ourselves available to better calls after us uh, because otherwise that would not be But Are you graduating now or graduating in the fall? We are all graduating as of the summer. But at least two of us will still be around for the project. Oh, that's great. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, when you point out you can hire yourself as consultants, <laughs> 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 